Hi, and welcome back to Reach for Wellness, a video podcast by Community Reach Center. We're located in the Adams and Broomfield counties. I'm your host, Vanessa Alarcón. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a licensed addictions counselor. In today's episode, we are going to have Dr. Kyle Simon talk to us about toxic masculinity. Dr. Kyle is a licensed addictions counselor and a licensed psychologist. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks, happy to be here. Yeah, so actually, I think you're our first licensed psychologist that we've had on the show, at least since I've been. So <laughs> you're the first one. What an honor to have you. Glad to be here. Yeah, <laughs> so talk us through toxic masculinity. What is it all about? Sure, yeah, I think kind of lately there's been a lot of talk about kind of masculinity and especially around kind of public sort of violence issues and sort of the increase in kind of death by gun and death by suicide that's kind of entered into the public awareness in a way that hasn't really before. Mm. Um, And so I think kind of it's an important topic to be discussing and kind of understanding as it's, you know, impacts a lot of people in a lot of different ways, not just men and not just kind of women who are in men's lives. Um, So yeah, I think it's a topic that kind of to some extent I've always sort of been interested in, Mm. kind of thinking back to kind of childhood, Mulan was one of my favorite movies and kind of how it sort of explores different. It's a great one. Yeah, just how how it kind of explores what kind of men and women's roles in societies are. Obviously being in kind of feudal China is a very different culture than our modern day American culture. And yet a lot of those facets kind of pervade our culture. And so kind of, when I was in grad school, kind of trying to figure out what to study for my dissertation. Um, I was kind of interested in sexism and feminism and sort of understanding that, but from a perspective, being, being a man myself, not, not, that didn't kind of live to my experience. And so I tried to think about it in a different way and kind of reflect on my own experience as a man and kind of channeled my research into that. That's super interesting. I've seen that toxic mac- masculinity phrase. Like, it seems like a little more mainstream. Like, I've seen it on TikTok and articles. So how would you define it? Yeah, I think that's that's important to kind of define the language that we use, right? Because I think, like you said, it's mm-hmm. used in a lot of different contexts yeah. and used in, I think, in a lot of different ways, mm-hmm. too. Um, and so kind of the way I think of toxic masculinity is it's it's things that are traditionally thought of as masculine, kind of pushed to an extent that is unhealthy or, mm. you know, violent, unsafe, you know, so gun violence, um, kind of shutting down of emotion, kind of inability to express emotion in a healthy, compassionate way. So like it's a result of toxic masculinity, gun violence, can I, be a result I, of that? Yeah, I think there's, there's research that shows a connection to it. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of what we're seeing since, you know, and vast majority, if not nearly all, gun violence is carried out by men. And um, I think there's been a lot of conversation about kind of mental health and gun violence, mm. but that's an important piece that isn't always included in those conversations. Gotcha. Um, and then it sort of ends up mental health it seems to be kind of scapegoated rather than it's identified as a maybe a causal factor, maybe not the whole cause, but then we're not seeing the kind of follow through of, so let's fund. Uh, mental health treatment in yeah. a way that I would like to see. <laughs> you know, absolutely. So with toxic masculinity, if someone identifies as a man or maybe that identifies with any masculine traits, how can someone know if they're being toxic? Like they may say, or being to that toxic masculinity level, because they may say, well, I'm not exhibiting gun violence. So how sure. would you know if you're kind of on that other end? Yeah, for sure. Because yeah, gun violence is obviously the far extreme of what kind of is thought of as toxic masculinity. And so I think kind of the key to identifying if kind of the masculine traits Mm -hmm. you're showing are toxic is self-reflection, kind of listening to the people around you, both kind of the verbal and nonverbal cues, you know, paying Mm -hmm. attention to like, um, are the things that I'm doing hurting the people around me? Are they making it hard for me to be a happy, comfortable or you know not necessarily mm-hmm. happy all the time because that's a whole other other topic for another isn't podcast, that toxic i'm <laughs> toxic trying to, positivity yeah toxic yeah. positivity yeah, yeah. So i'm not saying like 
trade one toxic yep. <laughs> trait for another. But um, just kind of, I think self awareness is a big key piece to, um, you know, avoiding being toxic in, in any way. You know. Yeah. So it's like embracing the masculine traits to dominate or to be essentially it could be harmful to other individuals. Right. Yeah. I think kind of examining our motives and kind of understanding like am i doing this to in a dominating way am i doing this kind of for power over somebody rather than power with mm -hmm. um that kind of ultimately kind of i mentioned my research earlier mm -hmm. the kind of conclusion that i came to in that research project was um did kind of distinguish between sort of traditionally masculine activities mm -hmm. like working on cars or watching sports or things like that that aren't inherently toxic and can have a lot of, you know, pro-social relationship building, connecting with other men kind of, or, or women too, you know, it's not yeah. exclusive, but um, there can be pro-social masculine activities that are separate from toxic masculinity. The, what makes it mm. toxic is that kind of aggression, that sort of shutting down of emotion, um, sort of dismissal of other people's experiences, and I think that's the piece that just being kind of aware of that dynamic and kind of recognizing when we're sort of falling back into those sort of top patterns of boys don't cry or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of noticing if we feel like we're kind of holding on to emotions that we don't feel safe to let out and finding a healthy, constructive outlet for those emotions, I think mm -hmm. is a key piece too. So what would you say if someone is like, help, I don't identify as a man and I am really struggling with identifying my feelings. I want to have this self-awareness, but that either doesn't feel societally right or just does, if just I'm not there. Like, what would you say to that person? Go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, gotcha. I think a lot of these, yeah. uh, you know, th these these concepts aren't isolated to men or men identifying mm -hmm. people. You mm -hmm. know, I think a lot of areas in our society don't allow for open expression of emotion mm -hmm. in a lot of mm -hmm. ways, regardless of who it is, you know. And so I think just taking the time to internally reflect, which therapy can be a great place to reflect and identify and share those with somebody else, figure out healthy outlets, find ways to process and express those emotions in mm -hmm. a way that, you know, will be safe yeah. you know, from, from repercussions. And what I've heard from some people is that some people may recommend therapy. Like, yes, that's a great place to connect with someone, share your feelings, but even like to make the decision to go to therapy can be pretty challenging for, sure. for some folks. Yeah. When I think, especially for people who have maybe ideas of therapy as being a sign, just going to therapy as being a sign of weakness, or, mm -hmm. you know, there may be some cultural or um, historical lack of access issues or, you know, there have been real world consequences to seeking out mental health or mm. even medical health um, services. And so right. um, I think for people who have belong to those groups, um, doing research, looking up kind of what to expect in therapy, um, there's a website I came across in the course of my research that I think is a good, especially for men or men identified people who mm -hmm aren't sure about therapy it's called mantherapy.com mm. it's a website about just kind of it uses humor to sort of dispel some of the myths and misconceptions people might have about therapy and kind of playing on some masculine stereotypes and things like that in a really funny way that also is very informative so man therapy is like articles blogs yeah i think it's, it's like informational videos they've got articles mm. um yeah, it's, it's a good resource for, for people who aren't sure if therapy is right for them um, and kind of in a humorous way. Yeah, therapy can be so helpful for people, especially as they're identifying those emotions. So it's kind of fun that there's already a website that directly addresses the gender stereotypes or for roles sure. in therapy. Yeah. So you mentioned something about this impacting other genders like this isn't necessarily confined to those identifying um as a man but it could be others can you talk us through um i think you mentioned women also but just what are some of the impacts toxic masculinity can have in the bigger picture sure yeah i think a lot of times other kind of societal issues i mean marital issues relationship issues parenting issues um can all stem from that mm -hmm. sort of 
blocked emotional process or, yeah. you know, I think of one of, one of my former co-therapists um, used the metaphor of a balloon that mm. our emotions, or I, we're, we're a balloon and our emotions are the air. And so if you keep blowing into a balloon and don't let any out, it's going to just get bigger and mm -hmm. bigger until it explodes, mm -hmm. which kind of can look a lot of different ways, right? Can be yelling, can be hitting, mm -hmm. can be mm -hmm. even more extreme violence. But um, kind of thinking of our emotions in that way, kind of finding ways to sort of let some of the air out periodically so that we're not getting so overloaded with our emotions that we snap and do something that we then regret. Yeah, so it really impacts pretty much every area. Like you mentioned that balloon, it could really right. just yeah. spread. Right, yeah, because when that snap, that pop happens, it impacts the people around us, right? And so it kind of ripples and then that causes more emotions for them to deal with and if they don't have healthy outlets then it just it's balloons popping all over the place so. yeah and then we may see some of those extremes like you mentioned right, right where yeah. violence kind of sure yeah come can in. Be, become you know unhealthy or violent kind of behavior patterns or relationship dynamics yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and when you mentioned it earlier, like when we we're talking about sometimes gun violence or mass violence, um, toxic masculinity isn't always mentioned as a component. So I think right. it's important that you brought that up and that we can talk about it from so many different angles. Totally, yeah, and again, I, I think the a lot of the concepts are applicable to anybody, no matter mm. what gender you identify with yep. or non-binary. Like these, these kinds of concepts are framed when they exist within male identified people as mm. toxic masculinity, but really it's it's a pretty universal concept that we all can, you know, benefit from being aware of those patterns and benefit from the self exploration and awareness to find find outlets for those emotions, find ways to sort of let the air out of our balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I like that because sometimes I think we hear terms and we may think, well, that's not me or that doesn't relevant to me. Mm -hmm. But this is one of those where it's like, well, let's have that self-reflection. Let's have that awareness. So that's one of my big takeaways from what I'm hearing you talk about today. Any last things you want to mention about toxic masculinity before we wrap up? I think, I mean, I know you mentioned at the top that we're both addiction counselors, yeah. and I think that's another piece that... You know, I've seen a lot in my work mm. with people struggling with addiction is that not not feeling able to let their emotions out in a healthy, safe mm -hmm. way. And so using substances to continue to stuff their emotions in a way that ultimately really hurts them and their relationships. Yes. I'm, I'm even now remembering like having run some groups where we're talking about dependency or misuse of substances mm -hmm. and it's sometimes for some of um, some individuals, regardless of gender, the first time they're really talking about their feelings and it can be really hard because they say, I'm not used to doing this. I'm so used to doing this, you know, using this drug or using this or drinking to not process this and now I'm having totally. to face so many things. Yeah, so it can be a really scary, very vulnerable mm -hmm. place. Because I think similarly to how substance use is, you know, kind of a, a security, blanket of yep. sorts or it's a coping skill mm -hmm. even if it has a lot of unintended consequences or you know unpleasant side effects it's it's a coping skill and similarly i think some behaviors that can be categorized as toxic masculinity can be a form of unhealthy coping skill too you know a form of sort of walling ourselves up and protecting ourselves from feeling vulnerable and so to kind of let those guards down and open up about these things that yeah. do feel really sensitive and vulnerable and that especially haven't been processed or you know yep. is sort of out of the norm can be really uncomfortable and so uh, it definitely takes a lot of courage and a lot of mm -hmm. you know trust with the therapist or whoever else you're exploring these things with and so um, I think it's it's important to recognize the kind of strength and courage it takes to do this thing that to a lot of people seems weak to process emotions mm. it actually takes a lot of strength and courage yeah no i think that's a great note to end on it it it's take it's work it is yeah, yeah. it's hard work and it's it it's difficult yeah. <laughs> you know it, it takes courage it takes kind of manning up i think <laughs> to use that to, to put it on its <laughs> no, no, head you there know? you go <laughs> thank you so much kyle absolutely I appreciate you coming on today
Um, if you want to hear more episodes of Reach for Wellness, I'd encourage you to check out our website at communityreachcenter.org. There you'll find the links to our social media pages. You can also find information for other podcasts that we offer. And if you're interested in getting connected with services at Community Reach Center, you can find all that information as well. Thanks so much and talk to you next time.